Hey, Chris Lipe here with a quick tutorial on how to use EQ on your singing voice. And because we're using the stock Logic EQ, we get to learn about how the overtones in our voices work just by watching a little bit of things while we do certain things with our voice. If you'd like help with your singing in particular, click the link below and join my free voice course. And I'll help you discover all sorts of things about how your voice can make sounds you never knew were possible. Here, we're working on the tools of the trade, how to craft the sound of your voice as you're recording and once you've recorded. Typically on vocals, we use what's called a parametric EQ. That's what this is called. And this EQ is amazing. I love it. It's free inside logic. And the first thing we want to do when we're going to EQ our voice is put a high pass filter on it. That's what this shape thing here is. And then we're going to move this in and we're going to have it start at about just below 80 hertz. Why 80? Well, a bit of trivia, 80 hertz is the fundamental pitch of a low E on a guitar. And you notice it's not cutting off at 80. It's starting to trail off at 80. Unless you're a huge bass vocalist, anything below 80 is going to be rumble or inter not interference, but sounds you don't really want that you want to leave open for other lower instruments in a mix. And notice by dragging this up or down, we can control the slope. I like to have a mildly steep slope. And you can see on this EQ, it boosts just a little bit right before it, which I think provides a little bit of warmth. So that's the first thing we want to do. We want to put a high pass filter in. We're letting the highs pass and we're rolling off the lows a little bit. You can, on this plugin, you can do it right here, or you can manipulate the actual numbers. Now you can learn a lot about your voice by experimenting with it and watching the analyzer here. Super cool. Whoa! Notice as I make that note, I've got a prominent sound. Whoa! Right above 500, that's, you know, let's see, 5, 10, 5, oh, 560. But I've also got these other things going on. Oh, those are harmonics from this fundamental or prominent sound. Now, when I adjust, I'm, I'm fairly dark right there. When I adjust my placement with my voice, watch what happens. Whoa! Now, when I add distortion, whoa! I'm adding overtones, I'm adding harmonics, I'm adding richness and brightness and brashness because you can see I'm adding overtones in the higher area of the frequency spectrum. This is really good to know. We can actually use our voice as an EQ by bringing out certain overtones just by how we place our voice. With that in mind, here's how to use a e real EQ <laughs> to complement that. We talked about high pass, rolling off our lows. The second thing we're going to look at is a general, another general shaping technique, and that is a shelf. Now I'm going to grab this purple one and watch what happens. Da, 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 da. See how it's bringing everything up above a certain frequency up. This is creating presence. Oh, it's getting so much darker. Hey, yeah, yeah it brings air out. Typically what I'll do is I've got a great mic. This is a Lewitt microphone, but I'm going to go down to about 3K, 3,000 hertz, and I'm going to boost just a little bit. I'm going to shape the highs, add a little bit of air and presence and brilliance to that sound. La, 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 la. I'm going to do it subtly. I don't want to ever boost a ton. Test, test, test. So darker, darker, darker. A little more brilliant. Brings out some of those harmonics, especially as I go brighter as I bring my placement forward. Hey. 
super cool. The third tool of a parametric EQ is this band pass, or we call it a bell curve. And typically what I'll do, and when I'm starting to dial in the sound of my vocals, is I will take lower 200s and I will bring them down just a little bit. In my voice, and this is stuff that you should experiment with as you work with this kind of EQ, in my voice, 200 to 250 can be a bit muddy, so I take just a little bit of it out. And I use this, which is called the Q, or the width of the curve. Notice as I bring this number up, I can bring now the value centered on a certain frequency down. So I can focus more on a particular frequency, or I can widen the range of focus. Hey, I generally follow the rule of dip narrower and boost high, uh, wider, okay? But typically, I will not boost anything unless I'm adding a little bit of presence. I will then work on cutting areas that create a bit mud of mud or a bit of harshness. So here's my mud frequency, low 200s, depending on what key I'm singing in and what mic I'm using. And I go fairly narrow, but not that narrow. Okay, that's how I'll set that up. And then I'll do another band pass or a bell curve. I'll grab this one and I'll go around 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 around there. Now watch what happens when I boost this range in my voice. Hey, hey. Not a lot when I'm saying hey, but when I go ha. When I start honking it and crowing it like a Freddie Mercury or something, these frequencies can get really annoying really fast, even if they're just flat sometimes. And again, I've, I'm using a nice mic, but you still want to be wary of this. See what the analyzer's doing. When I... It's not just the notes I'm singing, it's the way I'm placing my voice. So I will dip a little bit around 1200 hertz. So there's the basics for learning how to use an EQ to not only learn more about your voice, but dial in a sound over a particular context. Once you know how to use the tools, the best thing to do is to do exactly what I did and just sing into it, watch it, listen to it, and then work with context of your recordings, different keys, different, different genres, and use these tools to shape the sound of your voice. Typically, we want to use compression and EQ on our voice to shape and tame it as we're recording. I've done a video on compression. You can view that one right here. Ooh.